Good morning. Happy Monday. How are we doing today, huh? Or as they would say, down south, they say, how y'all doing? In Pennsylvania, they say, how you doing? In New Jersey, they say, how you doing? People say, how you doing different ways. Doesn't matter. I just want to know how you're doing, huh? On this happy Monday. I love Mondays. Say this with me today. The rest of my life is the best of my life. The rest of my life is the best of my life. Hey, I want to talk to you this morning. We spent the last two weeks talking about the curse of the law. Today, I want to talk to you about how to quickly remove the mountains from your life. How to quickly remove the mountains from your life. Here's our scripture. I'm going to read it to you. Void or void. Mark 11, 23. For truly I say unto you, whosoever, that means anybody, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, well, the first thing we have to do is, is find out what, what the Lord is talking about. Do I look all right? Huh? I can't do a thing with my hair today. How's my eyebrows? My entourage is not here. I'm not sure where those people are. They're supposed to be here. I may have to put an ad in Craigslist. Wanted. More members of my entourage. I can't replace the ones I got. I live with some of them. But I can add to it. Amen? Hey, we have to decide... What is the Lord talking about when he says, Truly I say unto you, Truly I say unto you, Whosoever shall say unto this mountain. What, is he talking about a hill full of rocks and trees that goes up maybe, like in the case of uh, Pikes Peak, 14,000 feet? That's a big mountain. How would you like to try to remove that? That would take a lot of time and a lot of bulldozers. He's not talking about that. He, he's, not talking about, he's not talking about a hill full of rocks and trees and dirt. He's talking about an obstacle. Uh, the word mountain could easily be replaced with obstacle. Something that is blocking your way. Years ago, a long time ago, Hannibal got himself into the history books because he went across the Alps with elephants. He actually took elephants. He had elephants in his army that he used as part of his fighting army, and he took these elephants and went across the Alps and, uh, and conquered all these lands because he was able to... But and a, a mountain is something you have to go over, you have to go around, or you have to dig your way through it. That's an obstacle. Now, obstacles of life are the same way. You've got to go over them, around them, or you've got to go through them. But that's not what the Lord is talking about. He's talking about Removing them. How would Jesus deal with an obstacle? How would the Lord Jesus deal with a problem? A problem is an obstacle or a mountain. It can be something that, that is massive, like unforgiveness, or somebody who is blocking your success, or something that is blocking your success? How? You have to ask yourself, first of all, how would Jesus deal with it? He's our model. He's our model. Always, you know, these, you used to see a lot of these bracelets out there, WWJD. What would Jesus do? And it was, those, these bracelets were for the kids 
to keep them on the straight and narrow. And it worked. It was good. But what would Jesus do goes a lot further than just what would you do in a situation where you're at a party and somebody is tempting you to drink or somebody is tempting you to get into a, a fast car with people who have been drinking. Then you have to ask yourself, what would Jesus do? But there's other times you have to ask Jesus, ask yourself, what would Jesus do? When an obstacle or, or a, a, a storm comes up, you have to ask yourself, what would Jesus do? How did Jesus deal with the storm? Now, the storm out there on the ocean, or on the sea, where they were probably on the Sea of Galilee, when they were out there, how would Jesus deal with that? How did he deal with it? Because he was confronted with this. So what the Lord did was, when he was confronted with this, he showed us how to deal with a storm in our life. A mountain, an obstacle, and he did it very quickly. He was sleeping in the back of the boat, and the storm came up. And the disciples woke him up, and they said, Lord, don't you care that we're going to drown? And he stood up. And he said to the disciples, let's gather in a circle <clears throat> and hold hands, and let's just pray. I guess he, he didn't do that. He didn't do that. No, instead he stood up and he said, let me try something. He didn't do that either. No, he stood up and he said, he spoke, he didn't talk about the storm. He didn't talk about the storm to his disciples say, boy, that's a big storm. Huh? If we don't do something, we're going to sink. No, he didn't do that. Instead of talking about the storm, he didn't pray about the storm. He didn't talk to God about the storm. He spoke to the storm. He spoke to it. Peace, be still. And the storm stopped. Now, when he said be, that's a commandment. Just like God said light, be. God didn't say let there be light. According to the Hebrew translation, God said light, be. The word be is a commandment. Remember Mary, when the angel came to her and said she was going to have a baby, Mary said, be it unto me according to thy words. When you use the word be, you mean something be. And the Lord said, peace be still. How would you deal with your mountain? How would Jesus deal with a mountain? He would say, be. What's the next word? Think about it for one second. Yell it real loud so I can hear you. I heard somebody. Somebody. Somebody in, somebody in Pennsylvania said the word gone. Be gone. Speak to your mountain. Speak to your problem. Speak to your obstacle. Speak to cancer. Speak to diabetes. Speak to blood pressure. Speak to uh, arthritis. Be gone. Is sickness an obstacle? You better believe it. Poverty. Be gone. 
Is poverty an obstacle? You better believe poverty is an obstacle. It's a huge obstacle in the lives of people. It destroys the lives of people. It's every bit as destructive as that storm out there on the ocean. And how would Jesus deal with poverty? If somebody, if Jesus was the pastor of this church, you're looking at this church right behind me. There's the piano over there. There's the drums over there. There's the stage right there and the podium. That's where I stand on Sunday morning. Of course, I walk around a lot. If Jesus was the pastor of this church, how would he deal with poverty when somebody came into our church who was broke? He would consider poverty an obstacle, and he would say, poverty, be gone. How would he deal with sickness and disease? He would say, leave. I say leave in the name of Jesus. The big obstacle in the lives of most people is the curse of the law. And what would Jesus do? He'd say, be gone. I break you. And that's what I do. If you need help with this, people, please call me. You call me today. I'm available all day long, except between 2 and 4 in the afternoon when I rest. You can call me anytime, except between 2 and 4 in the afternoon, Eastern Time. And if you call then, I'll get back to you. Glory to God. If you, if you don't get through to me, try me back in 10 minutes. That means I'm talking to somebody else. I will remove the mountain in your life for you if you can't do this yourself. Some people can. Most people can't. I will help you with this. I don't want anybody butting their head up against a wall, butting their head up against the mountain. There's no need for it. We are called to live a healthy, abundant life. But sometimes you got to get the obstacle out of the way first. And the obstacle almost always, is the curse of the law. The curse of the law is the obstacle. Let's get it out. You will be amazed at how your body will heal. You will be amazed at how your finances will begin to grow and increase. Once we remove the mountain from your life. Was that good today? Huh? You know, we have such wonderful partners out there. Prayer partners. People who call me on a regular basis and, and, and have me pray with them. I love to pray with God's people. I am always available to my partners. Anytime you need to pray, have me pray with you or you just need to talk to me about something, I'm always available to my partners. This is probably one of, if not the only, uh, ministry in the country where you can actually call me, call the minister, and have them pray for you and talk to you. Amen? I believe that if you are supporting a ministry, you should have access to the minister. Amen? I know a lot of these big ministries are good ministries. They're wonderful ministries. But you sure can't talk to the minister. But with this one, we're keeping it just at the right size so that we can minister to all the people who are our partners. We've been able to do that so far. Glory to God. But we're growing all the time. But right now, you have access to me. Tell everybody you know about this message. Everybody you know who is sick and broke needs to hear this. Anytime you make an offering, today's the last day of the month if you want to get your offering in. If you make an offering or you tithe to this ministry, call me. I want to speak a blessing over you at the same time. I want to bless your offering and I want to bless your tithe. Hey, go out there today, make it a great day, and remember this, God's word will save your soul, heal your body, and pay your bills. And remember this, the rest of your life is the best of your life.